opening the country. Hello. Hi everyone. everyone. Good night everybody. Well, now that we're live, if you guys could, um, a lot of us have friends in common, if you could invite others to come in, because a lot of people come on and they ask us, you know, um, how can we, how can they get on when we're live, how do we know? So, I will definitely ask if you know anyone to please go ahead and um, invite, help us invite and tag them. Absolutely, and um, share this message, share this live feed um, so that um, the word can get around and folks can get the information. So here we are tonight. Uh, we want to nail this topic and yeah. and stay in, in, a, in a respectable time frame. Yes. And tonight we're going to deal again with some uh, inhibitors against, um, inhibitors that affect our marriages. Good. All right. Last uh, last week we spoke, and and Sherilyn's gonna lay out to you some of the two topics we're gonna touch tonight. But we spoke last mm -hmm. week, and um, got some very good feedback from right. others. But um, we want to come back and and bring the other two messages to you today. Right. So last week we talked about um, the first one we talked about was uh, the importance of knowledge mm -hmm. and um, how important the more we know about relationship and uh, marriage. Uh, the better we are, uh, the better off we are. And the second thing we talked about was uh, personal hurts. Hurts, yes. Um, so personal hurts. Now tonight we're going to cover um, two exciting ones. One is association, mm -hmm. and the other mm -hmm. is um, offensiveness. Defensive. Defensiveness. Defensiveness. Yes, Absolutely. defensiveness. <laughs> All right. And so, um, so we're going to jump right in. Um, with association and when we talk about association we talk about the company that we keep right you know first corinthians fifteen thirty three tell us um do not be misled bad company corrupt good character right bad company corrupts good character and you know a lot of our parents told us this the generic way when we were younger and they told us basically you know, show me your friends, and I'll tell and you who you, you are. are. Yeah. And um, and that is so so very important. And so when it comes to being married, um, one thing that I've recognized early in the in 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 the process is that some of the relationships that I had prior to being married, when I was single or when I was in high school or whatever the case may be, those relationships are going to have to be uh, regulated. Right. And so I can't keep the same tight-knit circle with those that are not married or don't understand marriage or are negative against towards the re marriage. towards marriage, yeah. okay? And so I'm not in tight, tight association with those that are negative about marriage yeah. and, 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 and that put down their spouses and that type of stuff. Right. And so what I, what I would recommend is that we be careful about who we bring into the fold and we share this type of information with about what's going on in our relationships. Right. Um, when we're in circles like work or, or hanging out, it's easy to find bad advice. And bad advice comes cheap and right. it comes fast and it comes in abundance right. uh, because everyone has an opinion about how we should operate in our marriage relationships. Right. And, and, and so when we're struggling in our in our relationship which is very very normal because all struggle means is that we're in growth mode and there's an opportunity to address things to grow yeah. when we're struggling and we're feeling that um, that resistance that's the time that it's easy to complain to the wrong person and right. get bad advice so it's very very critical that we are around the right people people that will encourage us to grow those that will tell us those things that are not comfortable, things that we don't want to hear, right. um, but they're basically challenging us to be better right. because they understand the principles that govern the success of our marriages, right? right. You want to touch right. on that, Sherilyn? Well, I mean, we know that we have, um, we have friends. Um, relationships are very important. A lot of us grew up with um, friends for years. We have childhood friends. We have teens. Um, depending on which part of your life, you know, you know that uh, there are certain people that stay in your life forever. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I notice this a lot um, with many girls that I know, females that I know, male and female relationship, but more so because a lot of women that, that confided in me and would talk um, in female circles, they talk about, you know what, 
now that we now that I'm married, now my friends are telling me, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they seem jealous. Of, of my relationship because they're telling me oh we don't hang out no more what about girls night out now give me don't get me wrong these things are very good and important you you could you could associate your your friends but when you you went before marriage if you used to hang out with your girlfriends every Friday night um, that was your thing or you traveled abroad every um, every summer together now you're married. The dynamic uh, that 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 dynamic dynamic has to change, especially if your friends are single women. Not to say they're bad people, but who you associate with, you you become more like them. And there are certain new responsibilities now you have in your relationships. I would go so far as to say, not only just have relationships with, with couples that are people that are married, because some people that are married do not have a right attitude towards relationships. Absolutely. They are they do not know what it takes to be married so they might be fighting and they might have these um uh you know these these in these day and age some people have some interesting things that we cover late, uh, in future about what uh, marriage is supposed to to look like so they you, you want to make sure that you have my whole point of bringing this up is you want to have uh christian friend um ma christian couples or i should say not only christian couples but spirit-led couples. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I say that? Marriage is something that's found in the Word of God. God God is the originator of marriage. In Genesis, it said it wasn't good for a man to be, this man to be alone, and that God made him an, uh, made the man a helper. Mm -hmm. It did not come from a soci um, sociologist or a psychiatrist or anyone outside, or your parents or that friend. It came from God. So he has um, laws and rules in how to, to have successful relationships. So now when you have spirit-led friends, what they're going to do, they're going to encourage you in the, in the word. Because a lot of things, times we found out that there's a lot of things that we did not know about being together and about being married. So when we associated with people who were married and they were in spirit-led marriage, we found that their, their relationships were peaceful. It was more joyful. It was more, um, they were more respectful and honoring of one another. The husband edified their wives. The wife edified their husband. In something, it was like unreal because in in the society, we weren't seeing that. Absolutely. So I encourage the association to be spirit-led Christian friends, uh, positive ones. Like, for example, not friends that would tell you, oh, when you're mad at your, your spouse, when you're mad at your wife, oh, let's go out to the club or let's go out to a um, to um, whatever bars or whatever the case may be, you want friends that say, you know, man, they love you, they they like your your wife so much. Say, man, you need to get your act together. You need to. What is it going on? I mean, you need to listen to what your wife is is, is saying, and you guys work that up. Or advice you to. Um, I'll give you advice to go and get help. And women, you know, you don't want to house with your friends. And man, he, you know, all men are alike, and and get into all this kind of stuff. You know, he just behaving like all the X, Y, and Z, or whatever. You know, um, your friends might be, in, uh, single friends might be advising you, or even some married married um friends. So definitely your friends that you choose should be um, friends that would encourage, uplift, and add value to your relationship. Absolutely. And they should challenge you. Um, the, the, the big, one big thing is that we need to have a healthy enough self-image to take a challenge from, from someone that we trust. Right. Um, you know, older couples are very, very um, easy to, to trust and to understand that there's wisdom behind what they're saying to us. Yeah. Um, the, this is just me, but I love old couple, very old couple that's been married 40, 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, giving me wisdom and perspective on where I am right now. I love to be able to sit at the feet of someone like that. Um, I remember, um, he's, you know, God rest his soul, but a, a, a friend of ours, Jack and McGee Spencer, remember hearing them and watching them and, and seeing how they, uh, they treated each other and some of the things that they've done that was kind of strange to me at the point when I met them. Um, but I have so much respect for the wisdom that came from their experience. Mm -hmm. And um, not just that, but the fruit that I saw on, on their tree, the, the, the respect and the adoration that I saw from their children and their grandchildren towards them based on the way they've lived their lives and the, and the principles that govern their relationship. So association is a big deal. If you're married or you're in a serious relationship looking to get married and uh, the, the, the friendship that your spouse 
um, are, are, are encouraging, are friendships that are, that are pulling against what you're trying to accomplish as a couple, that's, that's really, really hard. Right. And it's going to be really, really tough to be able to come together as one. See, the whole purpose of this whole entire marriage and union from, from the inception of it is for two people to become one. Right. And it's hard to become one when you're not in a circle of like-minded people yeah, yeah. that are encouraging you yeah. to come together right. and to solve problems the right way right. And, 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 and to grow and not pull you down. And right. so association is a big deal. And um, so... Now one thing about association, we were talking about get positive um, friends. Um, it is so important because like, like weeds, um, weeds, you don't hear people buying any plant... Um, any kind of uh, on they come up they come to buy weed killers. weed killers to <laughs> kill weeds out of plants because we choke out plants you know you can't constantly have to to um to nur nurture and um, mm -hmm. create an atmosphere for the plant to grow and blossom in the way you want it to grow but weeds come to choke and kill it out and you don't even have to plant those seed weed uh, weed seeds no nope. you know they just come up and um, so negative is all around us. There's all, so many things pulling at our relationship and pulling at us as individuals. So why not associate with people that will encourage and build us up and add value to us in a way that will help us um, foster the true relationship we're looking for. And this is not a simple thing to do. You know, it takes mm -hmm. humility um, to, to go to someone or to associate um, with someone and let them see who you are. I mean, sometimes you don't have to give them everything, but a wise couple that's older than you, what we found, we have several older wise couples that, that are examples to us and, and guide us. They just actually see what's going on, and they're able to mm -hmm. guide Joel. They will say certain things that I didn't have to say, and guys, because I'm praying in secret and God raised them up. And um, so they would talk to Joel in a certain way, and they would give him information that he's like, oh, and the same thing for me. They will say certain things, and I'm like, how did they know I'm experiencing this? Mm -hmm. And it helps me. It makes me feel secure. It makes me feel um, that, yes, I have an extra win to keep going in this relationship, and it's something for, worth fighting for. Absolutely. And so that's really critical on association. We might bounce back on this, but yeah. I want to jump and make sure that we touch and give equal time to the next topic that inhibits our relationships, and that is defensiveness. Right. Now, defensiveness shows up, and I'm going to get a little psychological with this one. Defensiveness normally shows mm -hmm. up in a situation where someone feels threatened physically or emotionally. They, they're, they're feeling unsafe mm -hmm. um, physically or emotionally. And um, a, a few things happen, you know. And, and, and defensiveness is totally, totally negative for a relationship. It shuts everything down. Um, a few things happen as, as we feel um, unsafe physically or emotionally, and that is we either fight, mm -hmm. right, which is not good. We either, we either begin to fight verbally, physically, mm -hmm. um, whatever the case may be. Um, we may flee. Flight happens, right, where right. we basically... Um, run from that situation, we don't communication cease and, and break down and you basically run mm -hmm. from a situation like that. Um, we either freeze and shock um, and we don't even know how to respond right. or we literally faint, mm -hmm. right? And, and literally yeah. some folk, um, the trauma from, from, from past experiences or the way we're built internally would literally make us want to check out and emotionally we check out yeah. to the point where we're literally almost falling asleep in a conversation like right. this because we don't know how to process what's happening um, based on the insecurities that are being felt and so those are the things that happen. Um, you know what, I could say, hey, it's bad that it's happening, but the, the fact is it happens and this is based on the fact that we're built certain ways and we've come from different backgrounds with different experiences. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I'll be transparent with you guys right now. Today I had a bout of defensiveness um, in a conversation that Sherilyn and I had. And, um, you know, I, I was basically today, I recognized it after the fact, but it made me reassess, well, Joel, why do you, why do, you do this? And why did you do that? Why did you get defensive? And, and, and I'll, I'll share with you, uh, I'll be honest with you, my mode of operation when I get defensive 
is not flight or freeze, mine is fight. And I, 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 I begin to express myself and I can get, you know, in your face if I become defensive. Yeah. Right? Why do I feel that that's the case for me? Well, over the years that I've gone through these bouts of being defensive whenever, you know, I'm challenged or whatever the situation is that caused me to trigger me to, to a place of defense, I realized that I was dealing with some things, and I'll mention some things that cause us from our past to deal this way. Yeah. Um, some of it is abandonment. If right. we feel, if we're suffering from uh, abandonment issues, this is this is one of the ways we'll 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 respond. We'll respond defensively. Mm -hmm. um, if we have um, you know some type of uh, insecure inferiority kind of complex, um, that is another reason why we would become defensive. Um, low self-esteem causes us to be defensive when we uh, find ourselves in certain conversations that are challenging to us. Yeah. Um, or we just have emotional um, turmoil or trauma that has not been dealt with. Yeah. And, and of course, one of the most extreme um, situations that you could be dealing with is, is a mental situation. Right. Um, and it's all about health. Um, so there's really nothing to be embarrassed about, but they are real situations that cause us to become defensive and so today I want to address them um, because you know we spoke about a lot of good stuff in the last few videos that we've done but one thing I was telling my wife is is no matter how good the information is that you can get from professionals or right. even from videos like these if we're struggling with unresolved issues in our emotions or from the past or issues that are causing us to respond like this, yeah. it doesn't matter how much good information we get because all of these experiences and traumas that we're dealing with, they're affecting the way we relate to other people, right. especially in a close-knit relationship where we're talking about a spouse or a significant other. And when those significant others bring up what could be real situations that need to be addressed, how we respond to them it's critical. That's why relationships are the hardest things to, to, to make work because they're so touchy, because we're dealing with so much beyond what meets the, 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 the natural eye. And so I want to talk about, about um, and I'm going to let Sherilyn speak too, but I want to touch on a few things here that I wrote down. Um, from a, de a def Could you believe it or not? Believe it? There's, there's, a, there's a terminology called a defensive expert. Right, he's a psychologist, but his area is being a defensive expert. His name is um, Jack Gibbs, and he talked about six different things that we inadvertently do in our relationship that causes the other person to become defensive. Also, so someone can be defensive just because of what's going on with them internally, and I've experienced that personally. That you know, I would be in a, what you would consider to be a normal conversation if you're not emotionally attached and you're listening to my conversation with my wife or someone else, and I would hear something that would trigger me to become defensive. Well, that that is that is on me. That's an internal thing that I'm I didn't deal with properly um, that causes me to respond that way. Right. But then uh, on the other hand, we can actually trigger our spouse. To go into a, a mode of defensiveness based on our bad or poor communication habits or mm -hmm. things that we're doing that could be um, from the mode that we've we've operated in in the past. And the first one is dogmatism, being dogmatic, which means that you're basically a bully. You're saying that I'm always right and you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm always right and you're wrong. I don't even care what you're saying. I'm right. And so when we get into a mode like that, we don't leave the other person any other choice but to be defensive because right. now they have to protect themselves because they're dealing with someone that is not reasonable. Right. And so they, they're forced to become defensive. And so we want to be careful, and that's why growing is so, growing spiritually is so important because these six things that I'm going to talk to you about they're, they're a spiritual problem. They're, they're opening doors for spiritual things to happen. And we can actually operate this way and think that this is normal for us. Right. Because it becomes part of who we are. Right. All right? So dogmatism is, is a big deal. And it causes our significant others to have to go into a mode of defense. 
all right? Um, lack of accountability is the other one that causes defensiveness. Lack of accountability accountability looks like this. You, you approach your, your partner or your significant other, your spouse, mm -hmm. about a situation that's happening, and what they do is they find a way to shift the blame to you. So they're, they're never taking responsibility for what they're doing. They make it become the other person's problem. Once that happens, it leaves the other party no choice but to become defensive um, because we're not, once again, reasoning with each other um, fairly. Right. Right? So accountability is a big deal. You know what I mean? Um, we have to, I've learned, and I, you know, I've done this um, in the past. So what I've learned now is that, you know what, you're going to have to get to a place, Joel, where if you're being spoken to about something that is um, a legitimate uh, grief that you're causing Sherilyn, then you're going to have to learn to listen and, 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 and process what's being said to you. Even if you don't have an answer then, you're going to need to learn to listen and, and really listen to see how my behavior is affecting her versus using that opportunity to try and pass blame because that's lack of accountability. Right. You know what I mean? If you do have a legitimate uh, concern about the other person, that's not the opportunity for you to start um, pulling their bad behavior out when you're when they're, when it's about you at that moment. Right. Right. So um, lack of accountability is the other one that causes um, causes uh, defensiveness to happen in your spouse. The other one is control and manipulation. Mm, that's a big one. All right. Control and manipulation will absolutely cause um, cause defensiveness to happen. Um, I know as a man, I don't know how it works as a woman, but as soon as I feel any sense of control or manipulation happening in any situation where I'm dealing with someone as a guy, or as me, I should say, I absolutely, like a red flag goes up in my mind if I can sense any form of manipulation or control. And I'm no longer a reasonable person to talk to because I'm wondering, do you think I'm an idiot? Do you, are you trying to play me? Right. And in a situation like that, now here I am, I'm becoming defensive, or if I'm doing it to someone, they're you know, becoming defensive and we really can't reason through a situation. And um, you know, using uh, behaviors to control others is, is really the poorest form of what we would consider to be leadership, right? right? I'm big on leadership, but manipulation and, and, and control is the poorest way to try and lead right. or try and gain control of any situation. It is the poorest way to go about doing it, and it can cause people to, to, to lose trust and, of course, become defensive because they recognize or their spirit man recognize right. that I need to protect myself right. in this situation. Mm. All right, so control and manipulation is a big one. Number four is um, guarded and withholding information. Mm. All right. When when you are guarded and you're withholding information, what that does is it right away puts up a red flag for the other person to become defensive, um, because now you are you're in a you're in a posture where you're not sharing and on purpose at this point because you're saying that I don't want you in this space. Mm. You know you don't qualify for this part of me. And so now that puts up another, another um, uh, a red flag again right. for that person to go into defensiveness. And I'm going to get to you because I know you got a no, lot I'm of good stuff to this share. This is good stuff, man. <laughs> you know, Come on. <laughs> you know, I know you got to share, but I want to run through these six things yeah, real quick because, please, um, please. you know, this is, and this is from an expert. This is from um, Jack Gibbs, if you want to look him up. All right. Um, the other thing is... Um, ba -ba 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 superiority and this one is a big one this superiority one it it wants the other person to get into offense or to get into a defensive posture all right and I, here's what I could tell you this is coming from a psychologist right he's not a, a, a spiritual man but what I can tell you as a pastor and a spiritual leader is that his information is accurate because he's talking about symptoms 
and he's talking about cause and effect, right? right? But as a spiritual leader, I can tell you each one of these six points has a spirit behind it. Right. Each one of these six points has a spirit behind it. That's why growing as a believer is so important because once you recognize these things and you say, man, to yourself, honestly, I do this, then we can now have deliverance from those things that are behind the behavior, okay? Right. And so superiority is another one. And this is wanting someone to be defensive, and once they become defensive and they lose their cool, po their yeah, cool yeah. or who they normally are, right. now you have the posture of, well, now I'm going to come in as an expert, and I'm going to make you understand why you are who you are, why you're behaving like an idiot, right. quote unquote. Right. And now I, I, I'm in the I'm in the posture of a superior, and now I'm going to school you. Right. This is a behavior that would make someone become defensive. Right. And um, I'm telling you right now, there's a spirit attached to each one of these things that causes those behaviors to happen. And so, from a spiritual perspective, it's critical. Not only to recognize what I'm saying and I'm throwing information out at you, but I also want us to have a redemptive portion of this message where it says, okay, how do we overcome right. these behaviors right. permanently and how do we drive out the reason behind it, the right. spirit behind it, so that we're not always operating in this mode. Because we don't only do it to our spouses, we're going to end up doing it to people at work. Yeah. We're going to end up doing it to, to our children. children. We're going to end up doing it to in-laws. We're going to do it in other relationships yeah. across the board. Right. You know what I mean? When um, In the past, when politicians used to run for politics, we used to look at their family life to right. see yeah. how they would behave with the rest of the world right. because who they are at home is who they are across the board right. and it's the same for each and every one of us who we are in, in our relationship at home is basically who we are period yeah. across the board and so these behaviors are very very important to tackle the last one i want to talk to you about is the one of being critical which is which and, and in terms of being critical, is constantly looking to focus on finding a problem mm -hmm. to address with the, with the other party. All right, and I'm guilty of that one. Being critical was a big deal for me. I'm always, you know, I was always, oh, uh, you know, oh, look at that, you know. Um, let's talk about that. That issue right there. You know, so much good happening. So much. Um, we all have negatives and and positives about us. But mm -hmm. I I used to find to uh, seem to find the one thing that we needed to, to, to address and look at. So being critical all the time is another sure way to, to create defensiveness in someone. Let me tell you something, man. We all need to be accountable and we all need positive, um, we all certainly need to be um, held accountable on behaviors that we have that may be negative, right? Right. But we cannot look for a withdrawal and i look at corrections as withdrawals you, we can't always look for withdrawals when we haven't made deposits meaning if we don't build up enough we don't really earn the right to do all the correcting that we right, want right, to do right. and so if we're always correcting we're always critical we're always finding faults and things to point at to pick on if we're always doing that but we haven't built up then we are viewed as critical in the eye of those people that notice that we're always finding fault. Right. And once we, once they sense any any bit of, of critical behavior, then that defensiveness happens again. And so this is just a vicious cycle that will just continue and continue and continue if it goes unaddressed right. and it breaks down the relationship. Right. You know, there's no harmony, there's no joy, you know, you wonder, well, why am I even doing this? Why am I here? What am I doing? Yeah. If this is the pattern that we're going to be stuck in right. and there is a way to fix that. Sherilyn, let's talk. Well, Give me a perspective. Well, on, he on heal wounds, like we talked about, one of the, pa one of the uh, things that affect our relationship is um, past hurts. And unhealed wounds cause us to become defensive. Um, the ones closest to us, uh, us are the recipient of our wrath, so the same. So in a, um, in a relationship, um, husband and wife relationship, 
our courting relationship, the person that's closest to us is the one that will feel the most the most pain. So, you know, Joel and I, you know, we're out there, we're giving, we have friends, and, and we're having a good time with other people. But then when behind closed doors now, you know, you're with yourself. And the true you now is, which it shouldn't be, it should be the same way outside and inside. But then if you have un, un, unhealed wounds, if you have past hurts, um, if you feel you're, you're suffering from um, rejection or certain fears or insecurities or trust issues, mm -hmm. then all this comes out in, in the defensiveness. I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about um, one of the things that happened to me in terms of transparency, in terms of communication. Whenever we had arguments, or or the arguments came out of wanting to resolve certain situation, like if there's a situation going on within our, our home and um, Joel just wants to talk about it, I would first of all get defensive. And my defensive was deeply rooted in the fact that I came from a home without a father. And uh, studies show, and it's a fact, that girls that grew up without having their father present or a father that is not um, effective in her life that neglects neglect her, she tends to over, want to overcompensate because she's seeking, seeking love. She's seeking affirmation and, and approval. The father figure is supposed to create that approval in that young lady to help build her self-image, just to give her the confidence for her, to, for her to be able to cope and to love properly. And so in our relationship, I got defensive. So if Joel just came simply and asked me a simple question like, Sherilyn, maybe why did you burn the rice? For example, um, he just said, "Oh, you burned the rice," and I'm like, "Oh my God, you know, you know, you don't appreciate everything I've done." Um, or my thing was, I wasn't the one out. I would internalize these things, and I would shut down, and I would give him the cold shoulder because here I'm thinking that I'm not good enough. I'm hearing that he don't appreciate me. Um, he's not affirming me. Uh, I'm feeling re um, rejected. Here I am going disappointed, the one person that loves me, and I don't want to drive him away, and now I'm just going to shut down. But what I'm doing is I'm, 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 gonna, um, I'm not giving him the right or the ability to basically explain himself. The Bible tells us, it says, confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. And here we are in a relationship. We're the closest to each other. So we should be able in this relationship to be so to be transparent. Absolutely. I should be able to bring my her my concerns, my 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 um my issues and stuff to him, and he and him hear me out. And he's supposed to do that to me. He should be able to come and say, you know, I had a rough day, or he had challenges, or whatever the case. He's supposed to be able to open up to me. But if he comes and he's telling me his concern about something I've done that may have hurt him, you know and I'm getting defensive, I'm not giving him the ability to to heal. I'm taking away his, his, his ability to heal and to express or become intimate with me because I'm defensive. Mm -hmm. It's all about me. And it stems from a place of selfishness. You see, if I'm all into myself about I, me, or mine, whether it be, it could be valid, the fact that I was hurt and I'm experiencing real pain, and I really, I'm, you know, I really need that, that healing and that kind of, um, you know, freedom from what I'm ex um, experiencing. What I found over the years is as I listened to him, I realized that we had a lot of things in common. We were hurt in certain, in the similar ways. And I could understand more and more that, you know what, now I could open up and I could speak to him because here it is. He knows that I'm feeling certain pains. So it opens uh, communication for both of Absolutely. us. So instead of me getting defensive and shut down, you know, um, but open up. And even if it hurts, because you know sometimes you have to be biting your tongue like, you know, you know he's right, but you bite me your tongue. But the thing is, if I lash out at that time, that time I'm going to be hurting him. It says the Bible talks about um, your words being like honey and how it heals and soothes all so, um, wounds in a person. So... The one of the best things I could have done was just stay quiet. Though it was hurting me and I was on fire on the inside, I just calmly listened. And as I listened to his words, it began to heal me. It began to open up my mind, and I stopped, start, started thinking about him and not myself and vice versa. Absolutely. So it's very important that we're not um, offensive or defense, become, become easily offended in relationship. Absolutely. But again, that comes with per some personal growth. And it comes from, you know, filling yourself with the word. Because one of the things that I started saying was the word scripture that I will always say over and over. 
when he said something that maybe was hurtful to me, I would say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and I will overcome evil by doing good. Greater is he that's in me that e than he that's in the world, and I will overcome evil by doing good. So I kept saying that to myself. So the more he told me something, sometimes he could be wrong, and um, it was very hurtful. I would say, greater, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world, and I will overcome evil by doing good. And it, by speaking that and saying that under my tongue, I was able to now act that out. So when he's speaking, I could be calm. I could be saying, you know what, I could give him grace. A lot of us believers, we are so good at the repeating scriptures. But the Bible said in all you're getting, get understanding. All the knowledge we have about scriptures, but we don't have the understanding. Understanding is a critical, critical thing. Because when we have understanding, then we could walk in wisdom. We demonstrate it in our lives. So I would hear the scriptures, but if I didn't apply it to myself, in our relationship and in our marital relationship and the ones closest are, are, to you are the best people to practice this with because they're inside with you. Absolutely. You know, they're not strangers that you see to, tomorrow and you could hide, but they're in your home, in your atmosphere consistently, Ab and it makes you become better. Absolutely. And, you know, if we can, um, if we can manage this relationship, um, then every other relationship gets the benefit yeah, from, from the, the fact overflow, yeah. that we're grown here. Um, every exterior relationship gets the benefit from this. And so that's why it's so important to make sure that you invest at home first because everything else um, is, is, is going to benefit from what happens at home. So once again, just want to recap. Um, tonight we just wanted to touch on the two of the four um, uh, habits that inhibit our marriages okay. and tonight we covered association meaning who we hang with and who we keep close friendships with yeah. while we're married um if it's if it's negative then it's going to impact our marriage negatively right. um and as a man i know that it was very empowering to see other responsible men that would encourage me to do the right thing and i wouldn't see i didn't feel like man you know what like 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 the outsider and, and the second thing is the defensiveness. And you can, you know, rewind that topic and listen to those six things that cause um, your spouse to become defensive and also those things that internally can affect the way we, 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 we are um, triggered to respond defensively. And once we work and we grow ourselves in these areas, guess what? It heals us to the point where we can now be healthy internally to handle any um, tough conversation which will happen in our marriages so that we can grow and move forward all right so with that tonight we just want to pray and um, you know pronounce a blessing over all of you that are listening to this information yeah. and that need um, to, to grow and to, to, to receive victory father we just thank you for every thank person you. that's tuning in on this live feed and those that are going to listen later we thank you Lord God that we you would you would search our hearts Lord God yeah. And you would search us, Lord God, and, 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 and expunge every everything in us, Lord God, that is not of you, Father. We thank you, Father God, that right now, even as we speak, Lord God, that you are healing those that need internal healing. Yeah. We thank you, Father God, that you, your word and your spirit enables us to expunge that which is not of you and to empower us to become more like you, Lord God. Yeah. And so we thank you for the victories that are delivered here today through this message and yeah. through your spirit. In yeah. Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Over and out, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Always love it when we can get together on a live feed.